Hey everybody, Dave here. Hope you're having an awesome day. So Halloween is right around the corner and I want to do a really cool build, but I kind of took this idea from BP Custom Creations. Uh, we were kind of communicating back and forth and he sent me some pictures of a build that he was working on and then has since posted it on YouTube and it is awesome. It's essentially a zombie hand ripping through a wood floor and I thought, oh, I love that and I want one so bad. So I have to give him all the credit. I'm going to put a link for his video below. So go check that out when you're done. But I have this cool monster hand that kind of looks like a little zombie. I bought this little glass dome and I have a tea light. So let's go make something spooky. <laughs> Here's my glass dome. I got this at Hobby Lobby. It was like nine bucks. Got a little tea light here. Not sure if this is going to be bright enough. I might have to do something to that, but I'm not sure. And then I've got this cool little monster hand that looks like it'll work for a zombie. I don't think I need that chain, so I'll just clip that off. And then I think I want to just pull this bottom section off here, and then the rest of the arm will be perfect size. So I'm going to just put this in hot water for a minute and I got a little paper towel and just that thing popped right off so now this arm looks like it's just about the right size I'm using the glass here to kind of make a template into this pink styrofoam I actually got a big sheet of this at Home Depot about a year and a half ago and I still have a ton of it left so just trimming that down sanding it and that looks like it's going to work pretty nice now, I was going to put the tea light drilled through the wood base, but I think, actually, I might use the pink styrofoam and just double it up because that'll actually give me a nice height. It's like that. I got two of them. All right, so I'm going to use the housing from the tea light, and I'm just using this as a template. I'll cut that out with my X-Acto knife, just pop it out, and then I'll take the tea light, do a quick measurement, just make sure it's fitting. That looks pretty great. Then I'll trim out, score the inside here. I'm not cutting all the way through because I want to push this through just to get it started. And then I'm going to take the little action figure hand and push that all the way through. Now that's giving a pretty cool effect, um, just like it would bust through the ground. And I'm really liking that. I may open that up just a little bit so some of the light can come through. I'm going to hot glue the tea light in because that's looking good. Paint the inside black. I'm gonna put some Mod Podge here, and then I need to make a tombstone. So I went on my computer and I designed a little tombstone and I'm cutting some polystyrene on my vinyl cutter. And if you take a blade and you just kind of score it a little bit and you do a little bit of folds here and there gently, uh, it just pops right off. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of carefully bending it and then there you go. Now, it, to cut out the center of these pieces, what you do is you just simply score an X I cut a couple of additional scores just to help me as I'm bending this, but you just carefully bend it back and forth and then those pieces pop right out. What I'm gonna use this frame for is the outer rim of a tombstone. And it'll act kind of like a little bit of a lip or a ledge on the tombstone to make it look like it has some dimension. So I'm gonna take this foam core here, this is from the Dollar Tree, peel this paper off, and I took this one piece that I haven't really trimmed out the pieces yet, and I'm using it as a template. And now I've got this really nice piece here. Now this lip is not quite large enough, so I went ahead and cut a second piece. I'm gonna glue those two together, and that will give me the raised lip that I need on my tombstone. And I think it'll give the nice dimension that, I, that I'm looking for. So I'll finish gluing that up, and then, yeah, that looks pretty cool. So I'll do a front and a back. Um, I think here in a second you'll see all my components. So I got the cross, the front, and the back. I'm taking a little bit of aluminum foil, a ball, and just rolling around to put some texture. And then I'll put a little bit of this tacky glue, lay that down, and then that should hold my little polystyrene frame that I made. There we go, got the cross on there. That's looking pretty cool. All right, going back to the base, I bought this sheet moss and I thought this is gonna be perfect, but when I opened it, I was like, wow, this is really, really thick. And it didn't quite work for what I was hoping. So I went ahead and just used some tacky glue, coated the whole surface there, and I'm just gonna put some grass on kind of the old fashioned way. 
Now I've got the Citadel green paint. I thought the hand, I wanted it to be a little bit more zombie-like. So just brushing some of that darker green on. And then that's looking pretty good, but it's a little dark. So I think what I want to do is a little bit of dry brushing with a lighter green. So I took this Citadel green here. You can see the shades are quite a bit different. And I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing. So I got a little bit of paint on my brush and I'm just going to hit that. And that just lightens it up. Now I got this bone color and I'm going to paint the fingernails. And I think that will kind of give the hand its nice dimension. So yeah, I, I think the zombie like green is looking really nice. Okay, so let's take some Mod Podge, a little bit of kind of charcoal paint here. I'm going to mix this up and I'm going to put this on the tombstone. So I'm coating the entire tombstone and after I coated it and it dried, I noticed that the seam there kind of was really bothering me. So I took this lightweight spackle and I kind of smeared it all over the edge. And after I did that, you can see here, painting it up, it's completely gone and it gave it kind of a cool stone look. All right, we'll hot glue the arm in there. Now that's in place, so that is looking just how I want it to be. I, you can see I open up that hole a little bit, so a little bit more light will come through. But the tea light wasn't quite strong enough, so I went ahead and I took one more additional light and I soldered it on to the two pegs there. So I, I don't know if that's going to be super strong enough, but it's, it's an idea. <laughs> so hot glue in this on. And I'll show you something here really quick. I put two little lines. As I sanded it, it kind of had that perfect shape. So I did that so I could glue it and line it up. Now I got the same seam, so I'm gonna take that same lightweight spackle and fill all that in. Now I've got like a delicious piece of cake there, and I'm gonna go paint this black while that's drying. Now I'm gonna paint this brown, and then I'm taking some gray and just kind of dry brushing that tombstone. Take a little bit of this airbrush paint so it's a little bit thinner, and I'm just putting some weathering on the tombstone. A little bit of green, a little bit of Citadel Brown, and that's looking pretty gnarly. I like it. And then I think um, I'm pretty close to the end here. I'm taking this high gloss just to make it look like wet mud, and I think we're going to wrap this one up. I love it. Okay, it's done, and that was a pretty cool build. Now, the LEDs, they didn't turn out as bright as I thought they were going to. I thought they would illuminate more. Maybe my opening's not quite big enough. I'm not sure, so... That might be something I explore a little bit later, and I have no clue how these people photograph this to get cool lighting and stuff. My, my photography stinks, so ugh, something I have to work on, but hey, always room to grow. Let's take some turnaround shots of this, and as always, it's a great day to be a toy nerd. Have a good one.